All right, so we're going to talk about the basic configurations of a Cisco router. So remember, like the switch, when you initially start up the router, it's going to go through the power on self test, right? Uh, that means that you need to make sure before you even get to that point, actually, make sure that uh, you have the right kind of power, power uh, cables, uh, as well as the uh, right cooling in place, because all of these get very warm, get very hot inside. CPUs get, tend to get very hot. Um, and then, of course, make sure you have the right kind of uh, racking uh, material where it's uh, going to be in a rack or attached uh, maybe uh, to uh, a desktop or however, wherever you're going to put it. Make sure you have that selection also made. Push the power switch to on. And then from there, as I said, it's going to go through the startup routines, its own power on self-test. It's going to locate which operating system it should run. That operating system will get moved into uh, RAM. Uh, it'll then look for the uh, startup configuration. And it'll then, uh, if it finds one, it'll go put that startup configuration into, into uh, RAM, call it the running configuration. And uh, then, of course, you're ready to make the connection to the console port. So as I was talking about, when you make the initial connection to the router, after the startup, if it has a startup configuration, that's going to become the running configuration. But if there is no existing configuration, then you're going to get into what we call the setup. The setup is like a little wizard, but it's uh, text-based, not a graphical uh, wizard. That's called the initial configuration dialog. And that's going to take you through a number of uh, questions that you can answer and, uh, and do the basic configurations without even needing to know what the command lines are to set that up. Just like the switch, when you first connected in there, you had uh, the first prompt, which was router X, and you were in user exec mode, and you would have typed enable, and then you would have gotten into the next mode, which was the privileged exec. From here, you would type in configure terminal, or as most of us would actually do, actually type conf T, because that would uh, get us there with the shortcuts. And then you're in the global configuration mode. So what I'm showing you here is that when nothing's really changed in the uh, way the prompts look between the router and the switch. And once you're in that uh, configuration mode, they call it global because you're at the, basically the top of a hierarchy. And from there, you can navigate to different configuration modes. One of them is interface configuration mode. To get to the interface configuration mode, we start from the top, global config, and we type the, inter the um, configuration mode we want to go to, interface, and then we type in which interface we want to get to. And when we do, you'll see that the prompt changes to show you that you went from config to interface config by uh, displaying the config if in its uh, command line. Now, from there, of course, you have all of the uh, same types of commands that you would have had with the switch for assigning an IP address or a description. Uh, and, um, and again, you're seeing some examples. Now, the nice thing about a description, remember, is that it helps in troubleshooting. From uh, eight months from now, if you uh, start looking at the configuration and you are trying to remember what that serial interface was supposed to do, well, you look at the description, it says links to the internet service provider, and then you're like, oh, yeah, okay, now I know which one I'm working with. So descriptions are kind of nice to add that descriptive text to uh, be, like I said, helpful later when somebody looks at configurations. So they're kind of repeating the steps I wrote down, getting in configuration mode, using the interface command to get into the interface configuration mode. In this case, we're going to get into the uh, gigabit uh, Ethernet 00. And uh, remember that by default, routers have all of their interfaces shut down. They're not designed to uh, be turned on. Different than a switch. In a switch, all the interfaces are designed to be up by default, making it kind of a plug and play. I can plug a bunch of computers in, uh, and the switch doesn't care about the IP addresses. It's just looking at Macs, and it works uh, with, you know, all those devices are interconnected. Not so with the router. So shutdown is the command to turn an interface off. And if you want to delete a configuration, then you put the word no in front of it. So no shutdown would be the way in which you would bring that interface physically up. Now, again, it's a router, so we're going to still need a layer 3 uh, address put on there. But at some point, we'll see that. Uh, so here's the command, right, to shut an interface down. Like I said, shutdown is the command to turn it off. And if you want to undo a configuration, then you put the word no in front of it to uh, bring it back up. Now, we've had the discussion of what an IP address is in a subnet mask. 
And so that's minimum information we need to put on a router's Layer 3 interface. So again, when we're in the uh, interface configuration mode, following all the steps we did before, the command to add an IP address is IP address, followed by the uh, actual full address of that interface and the subnet mask. So now I'm going to create two routes in my routing table if the interface is up. This first one's going to be the L, the local route, and this is one's going to be the C, the directly connected. Now, why did I put it on the 255? Because remember, we matched that up with the IP address to figure out that the network would have been 172.18.0.0 slash 16. So that would be the C route that would be in my routing table. When you want to take a look at the information about an interface, but not the stats or the counters, we add a little extra command to the uh, show interface with the uh, command brief. So actually, it's show IP interface because we're looking and wanting to see the IP configuration, but we don't want to see all the other information that goes with it. So what that does is it then begins to list all of the interfaces. And with that information, it's nice enough to uh, show us any assigned IP addresses that we have on the interface. Now remember, that's what would be considered the local uh, route in the routing table. What it doesn't show me, but you could see if you took the word brief off, is what the subnet mask is. Now beyond that, it also gives me some other information that I also like to see, which is uh, the status of the interfaces, if they're up or administratively down. Administratively down, by the way, is where somebody actually has the shut down command uh, typed in there. So it's also giving me the status of the links. Now we just did the show IP interface brief. And when we did, we saw which interfaces had uh, configured IP addresses. We saw that they were up. And so when we do the show IP route, like I said, we begin to see those basically two entries for each interface. As I said, one is the very specific address that I gave to the interface. The other is the network that it's attached to. And the nice thing here is that I can see the uh, actual subnet mask now that uh, would have been assigned to the interface. Now you might be thinking, well, I didn't type a 32. That's what the routing table assigns to a directly connect, um, connected interface's local IP address. The reason for that is, is again, going back to this concept of longest match, which is uh, what a router does in doing route lookups. So that's not a configuration that was done on the interface. This one was for the directly connected part of the uh, routes. Now, without the brief command, and you just have a show interfaces, and in fact, not even putting show IP interface, what you're going to get is the full set of information about that interface. Again, looking to see the status for the uh, physical interface for the actual uh, line protocol. And then uh, and we've highlighted a couple of other things, like did you put a description so you can have something to ref uh, refer to? And here's the IP address. Notice this time it shows you the configured subnet mask. We have uh, the same settings that we talked about with our switches, whether it's uh, in full or half duplex, the speed at which that media is running. And then, of course, from there, we, if we continue to hit the um, uh, space bar, we'd uh, get past this uh, part where it says output omitted, and we'd be able to start seeing all of the uh, five-minute stats. Five-minute stats are uh, how many packets and bits and all that have uh, gone through this interface in the last five minutes. Now, one of the things that's nice about uh, some of the protocols Cisco has configured is to help us a little bit in mapping our network or even troubleshooting. And that is uh, helping us uh, find the a way for the routers and the switches, for that matter, to be able to automatically discover who their neighbors are. And so we're going to talk about a protocol called the Cisco Discovery Protocol, or CDP, and what that does for us. So CDP is a proprietary utility that's gathering information about directly connected Cisco switches and routers and other things, even like the Cisco IP phones. It discovers the neighboring routers uh, regardless of what protocol is actually being run. In other words, if I have a router that's connected to a, a switch, well, remember the switch is not worrying about IP addresses, it's worrying about Ethernet and MAC addresses. Router cares about those. 
but they can still talk with CDP because, again, we didn't really care about the protocol. Now, discovering is really a matter of listening. What the basic is, is that CDP is a, a utility that announces information automatically about a device to all directly connected neighbors, everybody that wants to hear. Directly connected simply means when I leave or have that CDP packet leave my router interface or my switch interface and it follows along that cable, what's the next device that it hits? Does it hit a switch? Does it hit a router? Uh, that's what we mean by directly connected. We're just following along that, uh, that cable to the next point. Now, because it is proprietary, it would not work if you had a mixture of different types of routers and switches within your company. In other words, if you had some Juniper switches or HP switches or Dell switches, um, you know, they're not going to run CDP. But there is an open standard that Cisco can also run called the Link Layer Discovery Protocol, or LLDP. And that can be a replacement, if you want to, to get the same type of uh, discovery about all of the neighbors, especially when they are uh, of a different vendor. Now, the media that CDP will go over will be anything in your local area network that's going to be almost always Ethernet. Uh, if you're using some connections to uh, service providers, such as uh, Frame Relay or uh, ATM, uh, this will also go across uh, those interfaces to discover, again, the next directly connected device. So we're taking a look at what this branch router is looking at in CDP. Now remember, CDP is not a request. The, the router doesn't request information. These other devices, being Cisco routers or switches, are running CDP, and on a timer, they're going to send information about themselves down that link, and as I said, we'll follow that link until it uh, terminates at another device, and then the discovery then is listening for that information. So on that branch one, we decided to type in the command show CDP neighbors. Who have you learned about? Well, part of what we learn is the host name that was configured on those devices. We also know what interface the CDP packet was received on. And that makes sense because HQ's packet would have followed that serial connection to come in. And, uh, and then it also gives me kind of an idea of what that device is. In this case, it says, look, I'm a router, I'm a switch, and, uh, and I can run with IGMP, uh, part of multicast uh, communications. Okay, great. So now I know about that device, plus it tells me the model number and what interface was used by the HQ router to send me the CDP packet. So now, by the way, there is even more that you can see on each of these. You can uh, look at more specific. That's just kind of the summary of what comes out of CDP. The whole time is how long I'm going to continue to keep this information. So let's say that uh, something uh, breaks on that cable. I'm going to stop getting CDP packets, but uh, I'm going to wait, uh, at least by default, 180 seconds, three minutes, before I remove that uh, device out of my neighbor table. And so that's what the whole time is. This is kind of a countdown, waiting to see if uh, I get refreshed packets from the uh, neighbor to tells me that it's still there. So the CDP neighbor's detail is what I was mentioning before that gives you even more information about that device. So what are we seeing? We still see the uh, host name. We're still seeing an IP address. We still know its capabilities, only at least now it's not making me uh, translate out of a table. It uh, shows me again the uh, incoming port, the outgoing port, the whole time. Uh, but what else it's uh, giving me here that I didn't see before is uh, the version of the operating system. That might be helpful as well. Uh, you know, contact information. When the information was compiled. I mean, it's just, uh, and, and some more detail information. And that can be useful, especially, like I said, if you're building your own network map. So you could literally jump to each uh, device and do a uh, CDP neighbor and uh, see what is discovered, then go to the next device, CDP neighbor, and then you know how they're connected, you know which cables, and you could draw your own network diagram just based on the information these routers are providing to each other. Just remember that CDP is turned on automatically, and you can turn it off interface by interface, which might be helpful if you have a connection out to the Internet and you don't want to let potential would-be hackers know about the equipment you have on the inside. Well, so far we've talked about uh, things like the router startup process, starting with a power on self-test, getting the uh, iOS image and loading it into uh, memory so it can be able to uh, run, 
and then uh, going to find the configuration if one's there in the NVRAM and bringing that in as well. If a router starts without a configuration, it goes to that little wizard, which is the initial configuration dialog. The biggest point of having a router is to get from one broadcast domain to another, call it inter-network communications, doing that by network IDs listed as IP addresses. Now we talked about how to uh, add some of the basic configurations to an interface, such as how to put the IP address uh, configuration in there, adding the description, being able to verify configuration through the commands like show IP interface uh, or show interfaces. Also, we looked at the way they, in which these uh, devices automatically discover each other through the CDP, Cisco Discovery Protocol, and talked about the uh, process of exchanging information, hardware and software information back and forth, being able to view that information with uh, commands like the show CDP neighbors or the show CDP neighbors detail.